I recently did a, a very brief blog on um, buying two or three tools, um, maybe for a present for somebody uh, to get them started in woodworking. And with that, I thought I'd put together a little film, a video to show you. So you've just bought somebody a few uh, hand tools and I'm gonna show you which ones. Um, get rid of the Christmassy stuff. What I was recommending was a, a basic um, a coping saw like this one here. This is an Eclipse, which has been around for 100 years. I don't know how long it's been around forever. And um, this one is what we call a four-in-hand rasp. It has coarse and coarse on the flat, coarse on the round, and then it has finer on the round and finer on the flat. So you have you know four aspects to this tool that you can flip and use you know, whichever aspect of it you need at the time. And then I've got a spoke shave here. I've got three spoke shaves here. These are basically the same spoke shave, just made from different metals by different people. So, uh, or different companies. So this is a record, this is a marple. So I'm gonna probably use this marple, although I might just use this one that Joseph made me, probably this one. So I've got some pieces of wood. So if you're buying a present for somebody and you give them a few pieces of wood, I'm gonna go through a few things that you can make with these tools that will give purpose to whoever received the tools. So first of all, this is Christmas and um, I should show you how to make maybe one or two of these Christmas trees. What I do, and I'm just gonna use the three tools. I could introduce some other tools but um, this is what I do for, so this would be great for children to make, or you, anybody. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just take a shaving with the spoke shave here, short one, and then pull back gently, take a second one, and you can put these in close proximity, you can make them longer, you can make them very long, you can make them short if you want to. So this is a great test for anybody to practice their skills. So there we've got one half of the tree. This could be the waves across the front. Um, it could be a whole manner of different things. Flip it over, pull it into the vise this way. I would not go completely into the vise this time because you can crush these other branches or leaves or whatever they're supposed to be. Push. You can put as many of those in as you want. You can go really super close. You can keep going, keep going, keep going like this. So there you have the branches. This could either go this way or it can go this way, depending on the tree. If it's a conifer, it might go one way. If it's a deciduous, it might go another. And you can do things at the end of here, if you feel you want to. You can take your spoke shave and shape the top. And you can do that before you actually get your branches on as well. And then if you sharpen that to a point down at the bottom here, then you can make the tree and pop it into a hole here and you've got your decoration for the mantelpiece or for whatever. There you go. So that's one thing you can make. When I've been working with my children as they've been growing, I've wanted to do things with them in the workshop. And when they're very little, there are many, many things that they can do, and here I'll show you how we would make a small toy that kind of interests them in the making of it as much as it does in the playing with it. So just find the center like this. So this is a seven inch stick. It's three quarters of an inch wide and it's quarter of an inch thick. And what you do is you're gonna put a hole in here. Just put it in the vise. So you got your spoke shave. I probably should show you how to set this. You don't want to have too much coming out, but um, 
So what you do is take your shaving. If you're getting a good shaving, then don't, you don't need to adjust it. If you're getting too thick of a shaving, you back these off and that will give you a thinner shaving. Just practice until you get the right thickness of shaving. So from that center line, somewhere around there, I'm just uh, angling my spoke shave, starting somewhere near that line. It's not critical at all. Just pull and keep pulling until you get a feather edge on this edge. Like this. Then you turn it around and do the same again on the same edge on that one there. What we're making is a propeller shape really. Turn it over. Now you may need a second piece just to give a little resistance and more resistance. And it'll flex out like that, but don't worry. It'll just hold this. Do the same again from that center point. Feather in this edge. You can use the shavings for starting the fire if you have a wood fire. Turn it around. You have to go high enough to make sure you get down near the center here. These are wonderful for kids. You just have to work with the kids and make sure you've set the spoke shape so it's not taking too much off because sometimes you'll come against some rough areas. The corners, you might want to remove those just to make sure that they don't hurt somebody's eye. So take the corners off. And you can do that before you even start this. Now you want to drill a hole. One quick 3 16 hole in here. Like that. So now I need a stick to go in the hole. And I've just got a, a piece here, it's about a quarter of an inch, I think, by a quarter of an inch, just under a quarter of an inch. So just take the corners off, like this. Nice long sweep into, then round it a little bit, just so it protrudes through the top. And you, you do really need to have something that's fairly long, because it gives you room for the palm of the hand, but it also gives some bottom weight to it. And then just flip, and there you have it. So. There we go. So that's a neat little toy. And you can go directional too, I think, like this. So great. So that's another useful thing, very useful uh, piece of equipment. Different things for different people. I, I think sometimes it's a great um, idea to make something that's a gift for somebody. Here I've just got some pieces of wood. I usually give the kids, if it was for my grandkids, I'd give them three or four pieces of wood. So this one is five eighths of an inch by two and one eighth, but it, two inches is plenty wide. So um, half an inch to five eighths, two inches by about 10 inches long. And this is where we introduce them to the coping saw. So draw a shape on here and then a handle in here like this, not scientific. Okay, can you see that? So what we're gonna do is use the coping saw. This is great, this is so wonderful for kids to get hold of. Why is that? It's because it's a doing tool. So this is great for anybody who's never worked with hand tools, should start working with tools this way. Down here, so I'm, I'm at the point where I want to make a turn here. So now I've got my teeth pointing forward and that's actually the correct way to do it with a coping saw, not towards the handle, away from the handle. So when I turn the corner on a forward stroke like that, I take short stabbing motions like that. Now then here, 
this is where it gets a little difficult. So what you have to do on these two little turny things here, just turn this and this one, oops, you slacken the handle and turn it. That means you've got your blade oriented, but this top part is, is out of the way. This is one of the nice things about coping saws, is they will cope with just about anything. So... And you can see I'm fairly close to the end here. This is wonderful for any new woodworker who wants to work with their hands. So that's how we get the shape for the spatula. Now we want to round this back here. Another part that I love is the spoke shave again. So what we're going to do with this one, spoke shave this time, we're going to set this side shallow and this side for a heavier cut. So we can go this side for a heavy cut and here for a refining cut. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. This is wonderful. This, if you're a slim person, this isn't going to work. You have to cultivate this. This is relaxed muscle. So short stabbing motions like this, just to get the profile. So I've got a, 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 quarter, a quadrant or a quarter of a, an ellipse, really. Then here I come up the corner, but something else is coming up too. When I'm doing this, there is the smell of pine I've used pine, but you can do this with oak or cherry or walnut, any kind of wood. As I pull this up, the friction of the sole of this spoke shave is um, causing the wood to give off a wonderful pine scent. It's just stunning, it's wonderful. So up here, this is just peeling potatoes. You can see this, can't you? This is just an oversized potato peeler. If you don't have a vise, you can just clamp this to a kitchen tabletop or a heavy picnic bench, anything like that. Kids just love seeing this just emerge. So I'm on the finer side of my spoke shave now, you see. So I'm leaving this beautifully smooth. You see that? So we got the profile, we've got this round here. And then I want the handle to be shaped the same way. So this is going to be an oval handle, which is, this is a, a spatula for mixing food. So here I'm going downhill. This is wonderful to learn how to orient the tool to cope with the grain. So I take off the bulk of the waste wood with the spoke shave because it's a wonderful tool. It's an easy tool to use. Most children over the age of three or four can use a tool like this with supervision, of course. Take out all the marks left by the coping saw. And what you're doing right now, if you've got young children, this is how I taught my children to make guitars and violins and cellos. When they were older, they didn't realize they could make a cello, so they just made it. And uh, guitar necks, this is exactly the same way you could make a guitar, a guitar neck. So even in the most basic form, this is very useful. So up here, to strengthen that corner, I come on at 45 degrees. Can you see that? So I've got a nice strong corner there. 
And the parts where I can't get with the spoke shave are usually in awkward places like this. So now I switch tools and I go to this wonderful tool called a four in hand. This is the rough rasp part of the, the tool. Oops, lost a corner there. That's how rough it is. So take off the corners, then flip over and use the smooth side. to repair that a little bit. That's oh, not too bad actually. It's got that. So into this side here I'm coming with the smooth part of the file there. Just shaking off any hard spots. I might take this corner off here just a little bit. This just takes off the ridges left by the spoke shave now. And that's my handle shape. So all I have to do now is uh, just a little bit of extra work with the sandpaper. And what I like to do, because everything is rounded, you'll see people doing this not good to do that because it puts the cuts across the grain and they're very hard to get out and they always show. Just wrap your piece of sandpaper around an old bottle, cinch the top, I'll make sure it's got no fluid in it and use that and that will press right into the contour of any aspect of this spoke shirt, of this uh, spatula. Round here like this Like this. Go to a finer grit, that was 180, uh, no, one, 120. And I'm going straight to 240. Makes it super smooth. And what you can do, if you are going to give it as a present, you can just um, dampen a cloth Wipe it over the surface fibres of this and that will raise the grain and make it feel rough. Leave it to dry for a few minutes and then go back in and sand it again with the fine grit and then it won't raise when they wash the spatula in the dishwater. And even in pine, this is a lifetime a kitchen tool. It's a, a lifetime utensil that will just last any cook a lifetime. One more bit. And before you give this away, you can just do some things like uh, you can coat it with vegetable oil, mineral oil or some kind of oil. Just that internal corner here that was the awkward bit, remember? This is how you make a spatula. And this can be adapted to other projects too. I love the way the, the grain looks after it's been sanded or finished like this because it starts to look like a topographical map. And that's my spatula done and dusted. I've got a simple piece of pine. This could be oak or any other wood, cherry, maple would work just as well. Now the hardwoods don't work any harder than the softwoods. They work just as well with these hand tools. So don't, 
But if I wanted um, a simple kitchen chopping board, uh, this is what I would do. And um, I would just use this, these just three basic tools, put the chisel away, don't need that. These three tools will get me exactly where I need to be. So I've got a piece of pine, which I really like. And this is a chopping board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a scallop in here like this. Like that. I'm going to flip it end for end. Like this. Do the same again here. So can you see my spoke shave is, is aiming slightly. If I go this way, can you see what happens? It's not going to work. It's going to tear these fibers. This is a great way to understand the nature of grain. Turn it this way, and look at those uh, growth rings just ripple and shine. So this is my basic chopping board, and the reason I've got those scallops there is because that's how I'm going to pick it up with the food on after I've chopped my onions, bop, 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 bop. Pick it up, I've got these two little indents there. On these other faces, I'm going to do the ends first. Just like this, watch this now, uphill like this. So this is angled, three, four, five, six strokes. That's given me a distance there of about eight to 10 millimeters wide, uh, just over a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Then I go at a different angle here. And I start working around this. Don't worry if these corners break, they probably will not break. If you're angled this way, they won't break. If you go this way, they will. All right, so I've got my round over there. I go to the other end and do exactly the same. Try and keep it parallel. If you're getting more on one spot than another, just move your spoke shave. Now I'm going to drop my hand here. This is just to put a round over on the edge. I'm going to back off the iron here, just take it back up a little bit for that fine end grain cut. And then to go over the top of those cuts with the fine setting. Back over this one with the fine setting. Great tool, wonderful tool. So now it's getting nearer to completion. Almost ready for the cheese. So this is my coarse side here. So I'm going to stay on that side of the spoke shave. Evening out that angle. Kids love this kind of work. They absolutely love it. I haven't found a kid that didn't, a child, I should say child. In America we say kids and in the UK we say kids. So, finer setting, the finer side. Break this edge here. You're going to use one side of this cutting board, probably. Doesn't have to be fast like this. I'm making it fast because I know you're going to get bored. But you can go slower, you can take very careful shavings all the way over onto the top edge, right the way through and then just break this edge here. And that's almost there. Now we're gonna take the uh, coarse sandpaper in the bottle again.
and break the edges and round everything over. Like this. And that's how I would make a lifelong cutting board. Single piece, it'll last. I don't sand across this grain too much here with the course because it's hard to get those striations from the abrasive out. And this is where your tools tie in with the whole purpose of woodworking, which is to probably, mine is, Always has been. How can I make life better for somebody else? How? What can I do in a gift or making a piece even for money, which I do? And I, I haven't found that making things by hand is primitive. Or, I missed this edge with the course, didn't I? Oops. if you can't do it that way and you have a tabletop clamp this to the tabletop and then move in with your spoke shave here and you'll have exactly what you need so you don't have to have the vise it's nice if you do here I go just to sand the whole surface silky smooth like this And that's how I would make a wooden chopping board using three very, very basic hand tools and some sandpaper.